A lot of Americans, and Europeans for that matter, are bugging out. They're going to New Zealand, they're going to the Cook Islands, they're going to the South Pacific, they're going to Costa Rica, they're going to Ecuador. You know, the Bushes have bought land in South America, hundreds of thousands of acres of it. Uh, there are a lot of wealthy people here in Austin, a lot of wealthy uh, business people that I've run into over the years. They tell me that a lot of the big money has left. The last three years, there's been news articles about that. That's a side issue, but Mike Adams, the health ranger, founder of naturalnews.com, huge site. An online news source covering all areas of personal and planetary wellness, from nutrition to, to renewable energy. And uh, he's written thousands of articles and built a following of over 800,000 people across the globe. It's a lot more than that. Mike has also founded a nonprofit organization, the Consumer Wellness Center, an online retail center, Better Life Goods, and popular publishing company, Truth Publishing. He now lives in Ecuador. And uh, he joins us for the rest of the hour. We're going to be opening the phones up on a host of issues. Uh, but, uh, Mike, you've certainly put your money where your mouth is down there trying to have real sustainability, uh, something the U.N. tries to create an evil clone of. Why did you move to Ecuador? Well, uh, by the way, thanks for having me on the show, Alex. It's a, it's a great honor to be with you again today. But you're right, sustainability and putting my money where, where my mouth is. Uh, right now, I'm living 80% off of my own food supply down here. And more importantly, I'm able to to make sure that I can stay on the air. So if things happen in the U.S. with websites, I know that I can host websites in other countries and I can continue to help reach people from Ecuador without being, uh, you know, taken away by U.S. authorities. So there are a lot of reasons I'm here. Those are a couple of them. What are you doing to keep from getting malaria? Uh, I'm not in the jungles. I'm actually in the high-elevation Andes. It's a perfect climate, year-round, spring-like weather. You, you think you're in paradise here, and it's, it, it's, it's really just crazy good weather and nonstop food production. You can feed a family of four on about half an acre here. Yeah, I've talked to filmmakers, like the maker of Crude, big film that just came out. It was 25 trips, I think he said, down there. And I've seen the videos you've shot and put on your YouTube channel. Really good people there. Uh, and so you're living in the high Andes. Yeah. That's right. It's uh, high enough to get rid of the mosquitoes and the hot weather. And like you hinted at the top of the hour there, Alex, there are a lot, a lot of Americans and Canadians and, and British and Australians who are coming here for many of the same reasons. They're concerned about the swine flu pandemic vaccine response. They're concerned about the global currency collapse that's coming. They're concerned about their freedoms, and many of them are coming here. We have great neighbors here. What about kidnapping? I hear Ecuador's got a problem with that. Uh, up in the north area near Colombia, there is a kidnapping issue, but we have really good relationships with all the local people here. You know, I speak a decent enough Spanish now to get by, and, and we're, we're part of the community. They, you know, we're, we're, we're valued members of this community. We're not loners here. So uh, I don't have any concern about that. Well, yeah, that's the way it is, I guess, in Central and South America. The people are the salt of the earth. You've usually got a small criminal group feeding on them. But uh, from just looking at places to send my family if I have to, the area of Ecuador you're in, separate from your research, does look like a pretty good area. Tell us tell us about your facility. Then I want to get into the flu. Okay, sure. Well, we, we have uh, some acreage here, and we grow all kinds of food. We have 80 different types of food and super fruits. Uh, 75 different trees just on our own land here, and we grow far more than we can eat, so we donate food to the local community to help people there and to help create good, good relationships between myself, a foreigner, and the local people. And like you said, these, these are really good people. And, Alex, this society cannot collapse because they already live so close to the earth. I mean, they can do without water. They can do without electricity. They don't have heating and cooling here because the temperature doesn't require it. If the whole world falls apart, there are certain places on this planet where people are going to be just almost business as usual. And this is one of those places. Amazing. Um, the flu, you're watching this. Uh, you're actually down in the hemisphere where a lot of this cranked up. Uh, we've seen the flu chart from the CDC. They say it peaks in a week and a half. Very mild. But people are being forced to take the regular shot. They're being intimidated. They're now starting this week with the regular H1N1. Uh, we've got vaccine trial deaths with other similar vaccines in Europe. We have the very same vaccine makers like Bayer caught knowingly shipping out HIV-filled shots 
with hepatitis. No one seems to point out why do we trust these people that they're deploying troops in major cities everywhere. They are savagely attacking peaceful protesters and even going on university campuses saying no one's allowed outside day or night. Uh, police dogs attacking. I mean, it, it, it's 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 devastating, Mike, to see this break down. You've also written some great articles, the 10 lies of the flu pandemic. You've broken down what's really happening with the government health care. Mike Adams, you've got the floor. All right. And and I apologize in advance. If I do get disconnected, I'll call right back in because I am talking to you from southern Ecuador. And sometimes that happens in any case. The, the number one thing that I think most Americans need to be aware of right now is that even if they never got the vaccine, and even if they never showed flu symptoms, they may already have antibodies for the swine flu. They may have already been exposed, and, and their immune system did its job, you know, the job that, that God meant our immune system to do, which is to overcome infectious disease. You may be walking around right now immune to swine flu, and yet, at the same time, these authorities want everybody to be injected anyway regardless of your status, regardless of what the side effects might be, and without any long-term testing ever being done on any of these vaccines. So this vaccine, I agree with your previous guests over the last several weeks who have said, this vaccine is more dangerous than the pandemic by far. Let me just interrupt briefly. Uh, Dr. Monteith yeah. made the point from the CDC's own numbers, upwards of 37% of Americans when they get tested who are healthy already have the antibodies for the H1N1, meaning that it's already ma massively in the public and a very weak virus. That So why would they, and they still inoculate people uh, who have the antibodies, totally pointless. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Well, it comes down to this. They use taxpayer dollars to buy all these vaccines. And if they don't find a way to use them, they're going to look pretty darn stupid. So they are going to push this pandemic regardless of the scientific basis for it, which is really no basis for vaccination at this point. And they're just going to make sure they use up all these vaccines, even if that means injecting babies and children and, and uh, immune-compromised people. I mean, they're just going to use them up to justify the decision that they made to buy these vaccines. That's, that's not medical policy. That's politics. Did you see the Reuters story two weeks ago where they said, oh, millions are going to die of heart attacks and strokes and autoimmune stuff. They're going to think it's after they take the shot, but it's impossible. The shot can't have a bad reaction. So they're getting everybody ready for the bad reactions, saying it's a conspiracy. It doesn't exist when their own internal CDC memorandums that were released a month ago said, no, get ready for adverse effects. Yeah, this is uh, I've called it preemptive hypnosis of the consumers. They're trying to feed people this line uh, to make them ignore the side effects and, and, and discount them as being just coincidence. But we've got a plan to do something about this. We're going to have a website out there where people can post the side effects that they're experiencing. And we'll be announcing that within a few days. So we've got to get some of this on the record, Alex, because uh, the, the whole medical industry is trying to whitewash this entire thing. They have full immunity. They take no responsibility, and they don't value human life. We'll That's talk about conflict line. of interest. I mean, they're the ones profiting from it, running the genocide, and then they preemptively say, if you get Gillian Barre or you get any of these other diseases or you die or get sick, it wasn't the vaccine preemptively. <laughs> right. And remember this. This is research that, that has come out of Canada just in the last few days, that people who get the regular seasonal flu shot may be at an increased risk of being harmed by the swine flu if they do get exposed to the swine flu. So now we've got a case where one vaccine is worsening potentially the pandemic, and, and and yet they're pushing both of these vaccines on everyone. Of course, I say don't take any of the vaccines. Just take care of your immune system, and you're going to be fine. You know, it's anecdotal, but neighbor kids playing my yard, they all, a bunch of them got a shot a week and a half ago. Now two of the four neighbor kids are sick in bed the last week and a half. And their parents can't yeah. put two and two together. It's, it's very common, Alex. If you look at many of the outbreaks of infectious disease over the last several decades, you'll find that, that many of the people who were infected, in some cases the vast majority, were in fact the very people who received the vaccination injections. I, I've called vaccines, Alex, the, the quackery of modern medicine. This is the one thing that they cannot give up. They can't tell the truth about vaccines. 
because so much of Western medicine and pharmacology depends on this mythology that chemical intervention is the solution to your health problems. But it's not. It's, it's just a collection of lies, and we are seeing it now very clearly with this swine flu vaccine. Amazing. Uh, continue. We're about to go to break, but uh, with the talk of forced inoculations, trying to force medical workers to do it, while Obama says, don't worry, you don't have to take it. Uh, well, very clearly, we're, we're getting lots of reports from people. You know, we get thousands of emails sometimes. And uh, healthcare workers are complaining to us that they are being threatened, they're being intimidated, and they're losing their jobs now because of their refusals to uh, get the, the, the swine flu vaccination. And this is happening all across America. So it is being made mandatory in several different ways, even though they don't admit Oh, yeah, they're having it. big protests in New York and New Jersey tomorrow, and it's now mainstream news. They're firing people. 